But I think the struggles that you have, they are what you label them, right? Mm -hmm. Like I've had really challenging years, but man alive, I'm so grateful for those challenging years and I'm so grateful for the struggle. Hey babes, it's Kayla Craft with the Mommy Millionaire Podcast. I'm a mom of three littles, ER nurse turned self-made millionaire and lifestyle entrepreneur. I am bringing you inspiring stories, business and mindset tips to help you be shameless in pursuing your ambitions. Hey, Mommy Millionaires, welcome to this special episode with my new friend, Susan Peterson. You guys, she started the brand Freshly Picked about eight years ago, and she has now built it into a multi-million dollar brand, helping people all over the world style their babies in a cuter way. And I was first introduced to Susan because I actually bought a pair of baby moccasins from her shop on Etsy years ago. Okay. So I'm talking when one of my kids was a baby. Yeah. And so this is such a funny story, but then, um, I think it was like a month or so ago, I was watching shark tank with my oldest son, Cooper, who's nine. And he, we're both fans of that show. I was watching it and these baby moccasins came on and I started freaking out. I go, Oh my gosh, Cooper. Um, I bought those moccasins, I think for you. And we started freaking out and we watch all the old episodes, you know? So I think this was from season five and we saw you get picked up. And I was like, I have got to meet this girl. I have got to have her on her podcast. Cause I, on my podcast, because I just loved your energy, Susan, you guys talk about a boss babe. This mom has really built an empire and I want all of you guys to take notes. I am so excited to learn from her today and just get to know some of her goodness. So welcome Susan to the mommy millionaire show. Okay. Well, thank you so much for having me. This is amazing. I am. I'm seriously so excited. And what's so crazy is I DM'd you and you totally just said yes. I was like, yes. <laughs> Sometimes that's all that it takes. I love that. I try to say yes too. And I just love that you, even though you have this thriving brand, you still want to give back to people out there and teach them how to do the same thing. And I mean, that's, that's amazing. So let's take it all the way back. Like how I know that I mean, I know your story, so, but I want my listeners to hear how you even came up with the money to buy the leather to make your first pair of baby moccasins. So I had been doing this for a little bit and I had been using scrap leather. And when I ran out of scrap leather, I went to the leather store to buy leather and (laughs) found out that a whole, you had to buy a hide. It's not like the fabric store where you can just buy a little bit of this and a little bit of that and some trims and go home. And I was, I went away so depressed because a height, a height of leather was $200. And I remember at the time feeling like I got so much money. I don't know anyone that has $200. Who has that much money just sitting around? And so I convinced my brother to give me, he, he installed windows at the time and I convinced him to give me his old windows. And I spent the summer breaking the glass out of the aluminum frames. And then at the end of the summer, I took the aluminum frames to the scrapyard and I got my $200 to buy my leather. That is so incredible. That's like, that's the epitome of being resourceful right there. Like absolutely incredible. Well, I think what, I think when, I think the reason people respond to that story is because within your sphere of influence and no matter where you are in life or what you're doing, you have the resources to take what you're doing to the next level, whether or not you see them as resources. And so I think like what I would just encourage people to do, my grandma would always say, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. And so just look around and think like, well, what can I do with what I have? And I think that you'll be so shocked with like how rich the resources are. Um, a lot of times they look like work. A lot of times they look like something that um, other people wouldn't do, but that's, that's why they're your resources. Wow. Okay. So how was your childhood? I mean, you're talking about your grandma. Like, it sounds like that's a pretty wise woman to have in your life right there. Oh, I had the best grandmas ever. My childhood is great. I grew up with six, five siblings and five of us were born in seven years. And then my mom had a little caboose like eight years later. So we, 
<laughs> when my dad was a school teacher. So my mom sewed all of our clothing. We baked all of our meals. We could never eat out. And if we did eat out, it was like McDonald's and we had to drink water. You know what I mean? Like yeah. We didn't get soda or milk. And so we were, we were really resourceful. And like my, I always was, hus- my, my parents always had side jobs. And so I, it, it, and so I learned like, if you want more, work more. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was, I was taught that too. I mean, if you just, as you could work for anything that you want, it's, it's available to you. So I love that. How cool. And are you, are you close with all your siblings? Yeah, we're, we're all really pretty close. Yeah. Do any of them work for you? No, no. Kayla, you don't hire family. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. We, well, we all make that mistake once because we're different, right? <laughs> you hear that and you're like, well, I'm different. And then you realize, no, it's actually pretty wise. We don't do that. (laughs) It's so funny because actually my assistant is my sister-in-law, but she's the only one that has worked out for me. I've gone through so many. And I think it's because I'm a very hard personality to deal with and she knows how to deal with me. And so I think it would only work in the assistant capacity for for what I do. You're really self-aware. That is a very (sighs) self-aware statement. Oh yes, I am very. <laughs> Say, it's just we just did it. We didn't work well together, but I love how you just took ownership of that. That was amazing. Well, you know what? I mean, you got to take ownership. That's the only w- reason I am where I am today is because I'm going to take ownership of my success. I'm going to take ownership of my failures too, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. So one of the things that stood out to me, and it's standing out to me right now too, is you're just like, I remember you on Shark Tank just saying like, I I will do whatever it takes. I will do whatever it takes. And, you know, talk about some of those things in the beginning when you're starting the Freshly Picked brand. I mean, it was not easy. It was not easy. Talk about some of those struggles. What was one of the biggest ones that stands out to you? We, well, still to this day, my husband and I don't have credit cards. I know that doesn't feel like a big struggle, but we we don't believe in like massive debt. And so we, we I feel like my past intentionally has been a little longer than other people's past because because I carried kind of that that uh, mentality in the business. It took me a long time to wrap my head around raising money and using other people's money to build my business. So I guess that wasn't a struggle, more of like a learning curve for me. Oh, gosh. The thing is, I think here here's something that I don't want you to roll your eyes at. Okay. But I think the struggles that you have, they are what you label them. Right. Mm. Like I've had really challenging years, but man alive, I'm so grateful for those challenging years. And I'm so grateful for the struggle that I think in my mind, it feels more of like a building block than a struggle. Well, that's because, oh, 100%. Like I definitely didn't roll my eyes. I was like, yes, preach it, sister, because it's so true. And I think some of the people listening in, maybe they rolled their eyes because they've heard it often from very successful people say that exact thing, because it's always about the story that you tell yourself about the situation that you're in. And it sounds like you, you're just like, Hey, whatever I'm going through is because I'm becoming a multimillion dollar brand. And these are just, these are just, they have to happen. Like every business has its growing pains. Yeah. I mean, I'm planting a garden and I'm running a farm. I'm not running a candy shop at the end of the day. Oh, Okay. You got to unpack that one for us because that one's good. And that's going on a quote card. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like when you're running a candy shop, it's like sugar. It's like that easy fix. It's like people are coming in and people are going out and there's not loyalty. There's not branding. There's nothing there. Right. Mm-hmm. There is. I mean, we know good candy shop. If you're running the candy shop, good for you. It's the metaphor, but <laughs> But I'm saying if you're running a farm, you're planting fields that you know you're not going to harvest until three, four months from now. You're also looking at a field and saying, you know, like, oh, we got to, we got to, we got to take care of this because in a year from now, it's got to be something else. You got to take care of the tools. You got to take care of your workers. You got to, there is so much to do all the time. And we don't close our doors at 9 p.m. You know, like I'm taking it home with me. I'm working on it all the time. And I'm always looking forward to the next harvest. Oh my gosh. Yes. I, you know what? Like it's all about sowing the seeds and, 
and the harvest will come. And a lot of people, they just are not working their land long enough to see the harvest come. Right. Yeah. And you're going to have, you're going to have bad years, you know, and you're going to have bad crops and you just got to keep at it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So you're, you know, how, how old was your business when you went on Shark Tank? Um, it was, so it was about two, two and a half years old. Okay. And what made you go on Shark Tank? So I had, well, a couple things. People had been telling me like, you should go on Shark Tank. And for the longest time, I didn't watch Shark Tank. I thought it was for inventors, not entrepreneurs. So I started watching it and I was like, oh, this is, this is actually something where I feel like the brand freshly picked my shop what I'm building could get a lot of exposure and, you know, I could tap into this awesome network of like people who've done it before. So I, you know, I, I again, like I don't really rise, but I put it on my list of things to do that year. So I, every year at the beginning of the year, I write down like, here's what I want to accomplish. Here are the goals I have for myself, for my family, um, financially, spiritually, physically, and for the business. I put that down as one of the goals for the year. Was it hard to get on the show? <sighs> it was. It wasn't. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. So we had, I had been growing freshly picked um, by, you know, like trying my hardest to do all these things. And we had really focused on Instagram marketing. Instagram, we, we had about, thir- I'm t- we had about 30,000 followers and I decided to have my first sell. I was like, let's have a sell. We've never had a sell before. And we were at the exact same time moving from made to order to placing POs with uh, our factory in California. And we had like one shipment coming of 200 pairs of mocks. Other than that, everything was made to order. So you would put it like your mocks that you got, you had put a place in order. We didn't make them until we got the order. And then we ship them out within two weeks. It was kind of our model at the time. So we had our sell. It was the beginning of May. And it we sold 2,000 pairs in like an hour of moccasins that we did not have made, did not have the leather for. I didn't even know how I, it, if I could get that much leather. Like no raw materials, nothing, right? And it was so overwhelming. It was actually like a... That that felt like a challenge at the time because I was like, what am I going to do? I went home and I cried actually. Oh. And then I called my one friend. You know, you have that one friend that never feels sorry for you and shoots it to you straight. Yes. <laughs> I called yep. her and she helped me walk through it in a very loving, stern, uh, with a couple swear words peppered in way and basically told me to get together and get up the next day and get to work, basically. Not Aww. any kind of that. And so... I got it done. Like we got all those moccasins out. It took about three months. It was really hard, but we turned, we made sure we, we turned it around and were very transparent with the customers and like, um, helped them see the growth that we were having. Like you guys are actually taking us from this small business to like a medium sized business right now. And at the time, you know, you know, you have that feeling where you're like, this feels like something really special. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know how to explain it to anyone yet. Like it feels like something special is going on, but I can't, I can't articulate it. Yeah. And so I just started recording stuff. We just started recording stuff, like doing videos of us sending orders out and recording the story. And, um, when, once we finally got the, the orders out and I came up for air, I thought, Oh my gosh, this is the perfect thing to send into Shark Tank. So I hired my friend, he cut the video and we sent in and within two weeks we were out filming. Wow. That happened quick. Okay. Yeah. That happened real quick. That is so awesome. And, and, you know, did that, did being on Shark Tank, do you think that that really affected your business? Like, did it change the trajectory of it forever? Yeah, it was, it was a huge launch pad for us. Shark Tank works if you work. Okay. I think a lot of people go on and they think, oh, here we, here I am. I'm here. I'm here. And we just, we had a whole sales funnel plan where we were like, we're not doing a sell the night that Shark Tank airs. We're going to capture emails. And so I don't remember at the time, I think we had a tiny list, but I think we captured like 40 or 50,000 emails within the weekend. We also gained, we also doubled our Instagram following over the weekend. And then I think it was like two weeks later, we had a sell. 
but our traffic immediately from the time Shark Tank aired going forward doubled. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. But you already had built a really good following. I mean, that's how you were primarily selling it beforehand, right? Yeah. We, we already, Shark Tank was just like, you know, on Mario, when you eat the mushroom, it just kind of did that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's amazing. And how was it? Because I mean, how was it having a partner come in and and basically like have an input on your baby, on your business? Because I feel like that would be hard for me. So, so when, so I didn't actually close a deal with, with Damon. Um, oh, so we, we both walked away post show. So we got pretty close and then we both decided it wasn't the best deal for us. You know, it, we had, we had negotiated it a little bit and he decided to walk away, I decided to walk away. So I didn't, I didn't actually bring money into the business until two years ago. So 2017, I raised money. Okay. Okay. I didn't know that. So a lot of people don't realize that a lot of those deals don't go through on Shark Tank. Yeah. I think that they're kind of cracking down on that deal. Now they like the deals to close before they air your episode. But I was kind of, you know, earlier. So I think there was a little more leeway. Okay. All right. So now why did you have to go back in 2017 and raise money? Was it again for inventory? Like what was, what did you need money for? We were... There's there's a couple of impact point well milestone years or like there's there's a couple of milestones I guess like when you're building a business your systems that you build one million dollars systems break in speed and velocity so when you get to like a five million dollar business all your systems will break and you have to rebuild systems and then you have to for for that next stage of business growth you know. So we had gotten to a certain stage of business and it felt really important that we bring in partners who had um, not only been in the category of baby before, but had also taken and built and taken businesses to that next stage of growth. And so we, um, we were able to partner with these amazing, this amazing partner out of California called Cyber Equity. They're very private. It's private equity and they're, uh, very um, private family office. And they've been, honestly, it was the best decision of my life. They've been incredible partners who are um, supporting us and helping us build a company that can take us to the next stage of growth. I love that. So it was just like perfect timing for you and your brand. And how, so how many kids do you have now? I have two kids. (laughs) <laughs> Two kids <laughs> because, um, and then are they, do they help with the business at all? You know, they're, they like to come in when we do like consumer events, we'll do like a warehouse sell and they like to come and help with the warehouse sell and like do go backs and run different things. Um, <clears throat> but in e-com business, you know, it's all like spreadsheets and yeah. um, like a lot of computer work and both of my kids are, so my daughter's almost 13. She'll be 13 in July and my son is 10. And they're both like, this is boring, mom. <laughs> I don't want to go into your work. So they like to do the fun stuff, you know, like the consumer events. And when we have customers out, but they like to, they don't like to come in just on a regular day. I love how your brand has evolved too. So let's talk about what are all the products that you carry now? Because you started out just with moccasins and I've checked out the site now and it's grown so much. Sure, sure. So we have, so so we design products for kind of, we we design products for mom Mm -hmm. as a mom. And that's kind of, it seems like a simple, oh, that's a simple statement, but it's it's very specific because we're designing. So, so the baby shoes um, are meant for uh, zero to about three. So right when you bring your baby home to almost three years old. And then we have soft soles or sorry, hard soles. We have sneakers and sandals, which will carry your baby, your kid till about five. So we're really focused on like zero to five, you know, like baby, toddler, and um, early child. And then we have um, diaper bags. And within the diaper bag category, we also have your big diaper bag where you need everything, you know? And then that kind of steps down to some smaller smaller diaper bags that are also with an eye on fashion where 
your maybe just need like one diaper and a couple wipes um, to get you through the day with your diaper bag. And then we also have kids, a little bit of kids' clothes and a little bit of women's clothes and women's shoes. I love it. Okay. And has what has the response been? People are just loving it? Or what is your number one bestseller? Our number one bestseller, so soft soles are which are our hero products, those are still like really good. They sell amazing. Our diaper bag, uh, we we have a very small we're mostly direct to consumer. We have about thirty percent of our sales come from wholesale. And our diaper bag is our classic diaper bag, our big one, is currently the best selling diaper bag in Bye Bye Baby and Nordstrom. And those uh, that one is is a close second to our soft soul category. Did you design the diaper bag? Oh no, Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> our design capabilities have outpaced me. I am I designed the very first uh, soft soul that we still use today, but we have this fabulous team of designers in house. Um, we also the soft soles are are our manufacturing vertically integrated, so we produce all of our soft sole shoes here in Utah, and we also print um, leather at our manufacturing. So we can design anything, we can print anything. It's such a fun process. That one, those are like the the the, the what we can do with soft soles is limitless. Um, and then we also have designers that are focusing on the hard soles and the sandals. And then we have designers focusing on uh, the bag line too. I love that. Okay. The reason why I asked that question is because I think a lot of entrepreneurs, they're scared to give up what you just gave up, right? You're like, no, you know, like that grew outgrew me a long time ago. Like, you know, your place and the business, right? And a lot of us entrepreneurs were like, oh, you know what? We just want to have our hands in everything. We want to have the final say, like we need to design, we need to create, we need to do the task. And it's like, no, you're, if you're like that, your business is going to be bottlenecked at some point. So, but was that a hard transition for you? Cause I feel like that's your baby, right? And so how, what did you feel when it was time to bring in a design team or were you just like, thank God, let's go? <laughs> well, it's, it's always hard. So mm-hmm. that just, it's always hard. Even if you feel like, oh, I've given up as much as I can give up. There's nothing left to give up. There's stuff to to give up. Um, I, I don't remember who says it, but it's do what you do best and hire out the rest. Yes. And so I think if you think of like your business, no matter what you're doing right now, for me, I w- I've always been great at like the marketing, the sales, the branding, forward facing, community building, customer service. Like I really thrive in that environment. And so actually giving up design wasn't hard, but I'd always, I was like, ooh, I want to have the last say. And then what we're trying to figure out now is like, uh, a structure. Well, what we figured out now is there's a structure where it's like, yeah, you can come in and look at the line and give your feedback, and if if it's valid, and uh, then then yeah, we'll take it into account. W- what I've realized now is like what I suggest usually is like the worst seller. So I'm, I'm like, oh, I guess you know maybe I'm a little <laughs> out of touch with that. <laughs> at every stage of a business, you have to give up. You give it up. So so here's my tip. Here's my test if, mm-hmm. if you should give up, what you should give up. Because what we, what we tend to do is double higher on what we're good at because it's the easiest, it's the thing that we're overwhelmed with. But if we just gave up the things that we're not good at, then we could focus on what we're good at better. So I always say like, we're going to do it for you. So Kayla, what is the chore you hate doing in your house the most? I mean, I haven't done chores in so long, but I used to hate to clean the toilets. Cleaning the toilets. So what in your business would you procrastinate doing to clean the toilet? Uh, email marketing. Okay. So that's what you should hire out. Ooh. Okay. That is a good little trick right there. I am writing that down. Because I it's easy. Like, that. oh yeah, I'd rather clean the toilet than do email marketing. Okay, cool. Find someone to do your funnel. Yeah. Right. Oh my gosh, you guys mind blown right now. That was genius because you, it was like, that just made it so simple. I, I, I'm speechless right now, Susan. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, so I love that it was like that you could put it into digestible little tips for everybody listening in because I think people 
you know, especially when you're in that small business stage, it's scary when you bring on people because you're like, oh, that's another, sal- yeah, it's another salary. Like, what if we can't do it? And there's all these things. And I've always said hire before you're ready because that's what's going to get you to that next level. Like you've gotten so far alone and you're not, you're, you've hit your max. Like you got to bring more people on that look at it from a different angle. And so I love, love that. I mean, I absolutely love that. The things that I'm in my zone of genius is coaching and speaking. And that's all that I do. And so I've hired out everybody else in my team to do the other things, you know? And so, but it's, it's, it was so hard for me to give that up. I was like, oh my gosh, they're not going to do it as perfect as me, but so scary. Yeah. Scary. So how how do you, cause you're in this like leadership position. How did you become such an amazing leader? Cause I look at like your stuff and I've, I've researched you like crazy. I'm like, gosh, her culture at her company is amazing. I, uh, so I have a really good COO. Ethan has worked for me for about, oh, he just had his four year anniversary last week. So four years. And he has taught me so much about like, honestly, if he listens, he'll be so embarrassed, but he never listens to stuff. So he won't even hear. <laughs> He's the person in the room. Like, you know, when you look at someone and you're like, well, their brain works at warp speed. Yeah. Um, but he is also the first to try to understand where you're coming from. So if he doesn't understand what you're trying to say, because I'm, I'm not a linear thinker or, or communicator. I speak in circles. I always have a story. That- you're the visionary. Yeah. He, will, he is so humble. And he always wants to try to understand, well, why do you feel that way? What your point of view is? And it has taught me so much to try to understand people before I push my agenda or what I think is best forward. Because I don't, I'm never the smartest person in the room. So I'm like Ethan, I'm never the smartest person in the room. But I'm also, I have to be the one that leads out on something. And so really understanding where people are coming from and what they're saying and why they're saying that and what experiences in them, their life have led them to that belief or where they're at has really helped me lead from a place of understanding. Yeah. It's all about, I mean, that's leadership with empathy. And I think leaders that follow that model are going to have the a most amazing culture. They're going to empower people to become leaders of themselves. And that's probably why your business has been so successful. So that's amazing. Kudos to you. Kudos to you. Oh, thank you. How is, how is the pressure? Like, this is a a weird question I know, but how does it feel to have, you know, to go from being this mom that had no money, right? Like, literally banging out glass to get extra money to now having a multi-million dollar brand that you're responsible for. Like, what does that feel like? Or do you just not even think about it? You're just like going. Oh no, I think about it. (laughs) I mean, we have uh, almost 80 employees. So yeah, I think about it a lot. (sighs) There's a lot of pressure. I think Mm -hmm. the thing where I find, I really feel like I have learned to make money. I feel like I have learned to build a brand. I feel like I could, if everything crumbled tomorrow, I mean, I can be bang out glass Susan any day of the week and I could go back to that person and I could start there. I love that. Or anything, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so for me and my family, I feel pretty secure as far as like the whole business that I'm responsible for. That's what was really important for me to bring in partners so that we had kind of secure uh, a legacy within what we're building. Because when you bring in partners, not only are you guaranteed, like you're always like, this is not going to fail. Like, I don't care if it's me and like, like a dust bunny at the end of the day, like I will pull this thing across the finish line. Like (laughs) it will will work out by sheer will and scrappiness. I will get this done. But like when we brought in partners, they have a roadmap. They have uh, partnerships with banks and credit lines and like all these things where once someone invests money into your company, now they have skin in the game and they have a fiduciary responsibility to also not let it fail. And so that's been a huge, a huge weight off my shoulders because they're, they're, they're as 
tuned in and as into it as I am. Yeah. And they just bring so much experience to the table. That's amazing. One thing that you said that stood out to me is you're like, you know, I could bring bang out Susan any day of the week or bang it out, Susan. Yeah. <laughs> and bang out glass, Susan. Bang out glass, Susan. There we go. Bang out glass, Susan. And what I heard from you is just like, you're willing to bet on yourself. So like when it comes down to it, like if everything were to go away tomorrow, you know, you know that you have what it takes to build another empire. Like, you know that you have too good to go back to that girl. Like yeah. I am that person still, you know? Mm-hmm. Even though you're like, a, you have a huge empire. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I live in a different house. I drive different cars. I wear different clothes, but the core of who I am, like, yeah, if all this goes away yep. tomorrow, cool. I'll cry. I'll feel sorry for myself, but I would start again at zero. Yep. And how, but that self-belief, that is what so many people listening in right now they're hearing that from you. They're like, gosh, she's so inspiring, but they don't have, they, they're not willing to bet on themselves. They're still stuck in, and they're banging out the glass. They're going to get the money. And then one failure happens and they just can't seem to pick themselves back up again. And what do you say to that person? I mean, I don't know. I always look at building a business as like, uh, uh, like a hike metaphor. It's like really easy for me. I love to go hiking. I, I hike a lot. And it's like, if you hike, um, if you fall, if you stumble over a rock on the trail, mm-hmm. don't turn around and walk two miles down the trail. Pick yourself up, brush yourself off, fix, you know, get a bandaid if you need to, but keep going. Mm. Don't, yeah. don't backtrack. Like try to fail forward if you can. And if you don't, then just do whatever it takes to like keep going. I love that you use the hike because even when you're going for a hike, you have to prepare. Like you have to bring the things with you. You got to bring the snacks. You got to you got to do the prep work. Then you go on the hike, and then you get the 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 victory dance at the end. Oh, I love visuals. I love that. Okay, so I want to talk to you about um, you know what it what it really takes to build your following the way that you've built it. Cause now, I mean, I know you're building the Susan Peterson Instagram, but freshly picked is huge. And the, I mean, yeah. So what did you do like to originally, cause I know that was back in the day when Instagram was fairly new, but I mean, you're all, you're almost at a million followers now on freshly picked. Um, I'm assuming you no longer, you no longer uh, control that. Right. <laughs> No, I mean, I don't, although I'm going to clean from last, we, we our our social media person last August left unexpectedly and we, you cannot hire social media, um, like three days before fourth quarter starts, just like not happening. And so I jumped back into the driver's seat and I, and I ran social media until, uh, March of this year. Look at you go. Yep. Cause you're just like, I know how to do this. It's like riding a bike. <laughs> sure. 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 And it was fun. And we, we actually made a lot of changes, which I think were for the better. And we've, um, so, so yes, I, I can do it if I need to. Um, now there's not like, I couldn't jump into the accounting position if I needed to. So there's not a lot of positions in my company that I could do, but that one was an easy one. And it was good to like get in and like strip out the stuff we didn't need to do and make sure we were aligned with our advertising team on like the content we were putting out and create like a new editorial calendar and um, kind of write a new copy style guide. So that was awesome. It was so fun. But the way that you grow Instagram is the fundamental not change, Kayla. Honestly, like we still do a lot of the stuff today that we did at the beginning, which was um, post relevant content that people that your customers feel like connected to and make sure that you're not always posting selfie copy or content. Make sure that you're posting, um, that you're sharing like, uh, the lifestyle that your customers are living um, use hashtags, not only in, in your content that you're putting out, but also to, um, communicate with your customers on to people when they reach out to you, you know, like people back. It's like the fundamentals are all the same. I think there's a lot of 
there's a lot of outcry about the algorithm. I mean, we do the same thing over here. We are not immune to it. There's a lot of outcry about a lot of things, you know, comparison, all that stuff. Social media, you have to use it. Don't let it use you. Oh, whoa. That's another quote card coming out. Um, So you say that and... It, it, social media is such a powerful tool. I mean, it helped you grow a multi-million dollar brand, but then there are people out there that do let social media use them all day long to pick up other people's agenda and they forget about their own. I freaking like, wow, you just slayed that. So, I mean, I agree too. The fundamentals, I mean, it's just, you got to engage with your people. You got to know what they want. And I mean, I'm looking on your site and you guys keep it very like, you know, you're, you're showing cute, content. You're talking about what's relevant for people right now. It's summertime. Here are some essentials that you'll need and giving them ideas of of what they can use. So I love that. And the swipe up feature. Hello. That's amazing. I know that that you didn't have that when you were first building, but... No. I mean, we were looking past at our old Instagram uh, post a while ago and I'm like, man, we used to post all the dumbest stuff. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but Instagram as a whole community has leveled up. And so the expectation is very different, you know? Do you have somebody that's a community manager? Because you have a, a community of freshly picked fans, right? So it's a whole membership program. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So our customer service team, I think we have 14 women. They're, okay. um, they, they're all stay-at-home moms. So they all work from home. And we actually call it the mom squad. And they manage um, all of the customer communication across all social media. And then where we actually, where our community sits for the Fringe program is within a private Facebook group on Freshly Picked. And, or sorry, on, fa- on Facebook. Um, and that is uh, managed also by our mom squad, um, uh, by our actual mom squad manager, Brianna. She manages that group. Okay. Awesome. And why would people want to join this membership program? Well, I think for so many reasons, Kayla, but I think, so what we, not only for like the discounts and like being able to save your fringe credit month after month so that you don't have to like, it's kind of like a, they call it the fringe savings account. A lot of moms do because, you know, $10, over four months, you have enough to like buy a pair of moccasins, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but our private Facebook group is actually such a good resource for moms. I mean, moms are in there talking about night feeding and co-sleeping and like um, every topic you could want to talk about. And not only that, they're also talking about baby fashion and preschools and like anything mom related. Um, and so it's a really tight community of women who support each other. And we have, I think we have like 90%, like 90% of the women that are in there are active. So it's a really, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big group and it's fast. And so I feel bad for the mom to like join at first and then like, wait, where am I? How did I get here? You know what I mean? (laughs) You almost need like a training, like, okay, let's, let's walk you through how to use the group. Um, which is kind of one thing we're like thinking through because we want people to feel acclimated really quick and welcome and like, Hey, we want you here. Let's just like, uh, let's, let's help you get, uh, acquainted with how a Facebook group works. Cause they're, they're a whole beast in and of themselves. Oh, totally. We have a, we have a community for our membership program too. And, um, it is, it's, it's a full-time, I mean, it's more than a couple of people's full-time jobs. So it's, it's a lot. And I mean, I'm just curious, is it an open or a closed model? Can people get into it at any time? Okay. Okay. No, you, you have to be a fringe member to be in it. Well, um, but I mean, can they become a fringe member at any time? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I I think like one thing that I've seen is like when you have a closed membership model where, I mean, you know, it's only four times a year that they can get in. It helps with a lot of the lostness that people feel if they're just randomly coming in every day. Right. And so then you also create FOMO because then it's like, you know, I don't want to leave this group. I want to make sure I stay in it. And then also like people are like, oh my gosh, I can't wait. Like they're waiting for opening day to come back in and they're like super excited. So it might create some more urgency if people take it in. Interesting. That's very interesting. <laughs> a lot of my, me and my friends that have membership groups, that's the model that we follow. We find it like works out the best. So it's something to think about, but 
I am so obsessed. I'm going to become a member before you close it if you end up doing that. <laughs> because I love that you have so many options. And so for those of you guys like listening right now, I mean, it's it's great for gifts. I mean, these moccasins are amazing. That's just the one product I've tried. But I mean, I used to have one in like every single color for, for Cooper. So it's so, I mean, we probably had a conversation years ago and uh, it's funny that we're talking now, but I love... The, what you've created. And I admire your hard work so much. And what are your, like when you're thinking about like going forward, like where do you see yourself in five years? Oh, five years. Um, I'm sure. I mean, I think I'll be, I'll be slinging mocks still probably, <laughs> you know, um, we have what our product team is currently working on is like, um, they're working on product development for the next like five years actually. And so I'm excited to see like where our product offering takes us and what freshly picked takes us. I think, um, as far as me as an entrepreneur, like I'd love to like learn how to like, I could, I could, I, like I said, I could stop tomorrow and I could go build another brand to like 10, 15 million. But what I'm really interested in is like, how do you build a hundred million dollar brand? How do you build a fifty million dollar brand? Like, mm-hmm. I want to be here and see how that's done, and like learn the learn how to do that, so then I can go do it again. Like, I would love to just continue to work until I die. You know what I mean? One of those yeah. people. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. It's like I don't want to ever retire. Like, and what you're doing is like what I'm hearing is like you want to know the blueprint of what it takes. Cause I mean, once you get to a hundred million, I mean, you do you keep following the same thing until you get to 500 million. I don't know. I don't know. I don't <laughs> know when I get there Then maybe I'll have to like level up somehow, you know? <laughs> do you have any, speaking of that, do you have any coaches that you work with? No, not specifically. So I've always been, so, so freshly picked has a board of directors. Like we have a, a formal board with like formal meetings and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I have always, I think one of, I think my unfair advantage is I'm actually really good about forming like the Susan Peterson personal board and being fastidious about um, making sure that the people that are on there are actually people that I need to help take me to the next level. So I'm always like, I have probably four to five people that I talk to regularly that I'm running problems through that I'm like making sure that I'm on the right track. And you know, that's anyone from like, I have an attorney who's who's been who's written so many deals to like a friend of mine who's probably like two years ahead of me on the same kind of business trajectory um, to like a really good friend who's done a ton of things. So I would say I have between anywhere between four to five members at any time. And what's going to happen when you form a personal board is that you are going to outgrow people and. It's always shocking when it happens because you think, no, no, these people are smart. We're there. We're at the same level. But like your first board that you form is going to be like, oh, it's like your brother who's an, a lawyer or your friend who's an accountant. And those people are answering questions. But then pretty soon when you ask them the questions, you realize, oh, the answers that he's given me are things that I've already thought of or we've already done that. And it doesn't mean that you have to get rid of them, but I've, I, I constantly am like switching people out of my board seat, if you will. Okay. That's okay. So we have to talk about that before we go, because how do you get, cause I, I feel like I'm almost there with somebody and how do you do that without, you know, hurting, I guess it's like, I mean, you can't even, you can't take it personal. It's just like in order for the business to grow, in order for Susan to grow, we have to, we have to move on. Yeah. I mean, I think that these are, these are the these are the decisions, Kayla, that take you from being a business owner to an entrepreneur. Mm. So if you own a business, that's fine, you know. But if you want to build and like really take things, sometimes it's a conversation. Sometimes it's a wane and like questions, and then I see them and they say, "How you doing?" And like we talk about stuff. Usually, I have found nine out of times, nine out of ten times. The people understand that they're that you are you need to like kind of replace them a little bit. Well, yeah, and I think that I mean when you say it like that, it's like you wouldn't have people that were jerks on your board that wouldn't understand it in the first place anyway, right? Because you're only surrounding yourself with the best anyway. So 
for, for what you know at the time. So I think that that totally makes sense. I love that. Oh my gosh. Well, this totally different than my personal relationships. You know, you don't not grow people in your personal relationships, but within business, you do a little mm-hmm. bit, a lot of times. Yeah. I could totally see that. I could totally see that. So I have loved every single minute with you. Where can people find you? Okay. So in eatfreshlypicked.com and at Freshly Picked on every social media site. Okay. All right. So we are going to link up all of her stuff. We're going to link up her membership site so you guys can check it out. Uh, If you guys loved this episode with Susan Peterson, please take a screenshot and tag both her and I. Tell us what you loved about this episode because that I know that's the reason why she gets on these is because she's giving back to all of you guys the knowledge that she's gone through a lot of pain in order to get. And so the least you could do is tell her how she helped you today. And I would be forever grateful for you guys giving back in that way. And reminder, if you guys have not left a review of the Mommy Millionaire Show, make sure to do that today. I know we keep this show completely sponsor free because I hate listening to ads and I don't ever want to bring that on. But the reason I do it for free is because you guys give me reviews. So continue to do that and just head over to iTunes you just scroll down, pick that five stars and tell us what you're loving about it. And I appreciate every single one of you guys until next time, go out there and get what you want. Thank you for listening to the mommy millionaire podcast for free resources and materials. Head over to mommymillionaire.co. Make sure to follow mommy millionaire on Spotify and subscribe on iTunes. And it would mean the world to me if you left a five-star review of the show. And as always, ladies, go out there and get what you want.